Imagine going back in time and getting on a beautiful blimp that was a marvel of engineering in the 1930s. Today, thanks to the magic of colorized photos, we want you to experience the beauty of the Hindenburg like never before. Take a trip through these beautiful pictures and learn about the long and interesting history of this famous airship, from its early days of flying to its sad end. Picture yourself flying smoothly through the sky on the Hindenburg, a beautiful airship built to cross the Atlantic Ocean. The Hindenburg was not just any airplane, it was the longest airship ever built, which was a very important term. In the 1930s, airships like the Hindenburg were seen as the height of style and luxury, and they were hailed as the way of the future for air travel. The Hindenburg was the first ship to regularly travel across the Atlantic Ocean, and it promised its passengers an adventure they would never forget. But this dream of luxurious blimp travel came to a terrible end when the Hindenburg caught fire in a very public accident. The Hindenburg was more than just a huge rocket full of gas, though. Duralumin is a new, lightweight metal that was used to make its strong internal frame. Think of this framework as a long line of huge rings that look like Ferris wheels and go around the whole blimp. There were 16 separate balloons filled with hydrogen gas nestled between these rings. They provided the lift the Hindenburg needed to stay upright. Long beams, like the rungs on a ladder, linked the rings to keep the structure strong. This kept the airship's shape and function stable. But the Hindenburg wasn't just a structure floating through the sky. It had a cotton fabric shell that was carefully treated with a special covering that made it reflect light. This covering did two things. It protected the gas bags inside from the sun's dangerous rays, ultraviolet and infrared, which could hurt them or make them too hot. The Hindenburg also had gas bags that were designed in a way that was very cutting edge. In contrast to traditional methods, its bags were made with multiple layers of a unique rubber material. This was a big step forward that was first made by the famous Goodyear company. Getting on the Hindenburg was like joining a world of luxury, which was the idea of the talented Fritz August Bruhaus. Bruhaus was no new to designing high-end items. He had worked on a number of important projects, such as luxurious train cars, Grand Ocean liners, and even powerful German battleships. The upper deck of the Hindenburg, which had many luxurious rooms, was where most of the ship's passengers lived. There were 25 cozy cabins in the middle, and each one could easily fit two people. But the airship's big public rooms were its real gems. Imagine a beautiful eating room that is perfect for getting together with friends and family for meals. A calm lounge and a dedicated writing room were right next to each other, inviting travelers to relax and do nothing. If you look inside one of the cabins, you'll find features that were ahead of their time, like a call button for quick service, a small desk that could be folded out when needed, and a sink with both hot and cold running water. These were all amazing examples of modern ease in the 1930s, not only that, but a small closet had room for a small outfit. Eating on the Hindenburg was like eating in a big city. Beautiful drawings hung on the walls of the dining room showed the exciting trips that the Graf Zeppelin took to South America. Still, one of the most beautiful things about the Hindenburg was its wide views. Beautifully angled windows were on both decks so travelers could see the beautiful scenery below the whole time they were traveling. Even though the cabins were comfortable,
passengers were urged to meet new people and socialize in the large public areas. This created a sense of community in the clouds. Now, let's look at something very strange. A smoking room on a huge hydrogen blimp. But don't worry, safety was always the most important thing. This one-of-a-kind room had higher air pressure than the rest of the ship, which kept any hydrogen leaks inside. The smoking room on the Hindenburg was more than just a place to smoke, though. There was a fancy bar between the smoking area and the exit hatch. Here, the Hindenburg's famous bartender, Max Schulzer, made signature drinks for thirsty guests. But Schulzer's main job wasn't just to make drinks, it was very important for safety. He carefully watched the airlock door to make sure that no one left the smoking room with a lit cigarette, cigar, or pipe which could start a fire that could destroy everything. Even though the Hindenburg's time in the sky was short, it was well spent. In its first year of service, 1936, it made an amazing 17 trips around the Atlantic Ocean. Its first official passenger trip across the North Atlantic left from Frankfurt, Germany on May 6, 1936 with 50 excited guests and 56 crew members. When you get to Lakehurst, New Jersey on May 9th, you can imagine how smoothly the trip went. The Hindenburg was known for being very stable. People could even use writing tools on tables without worrying about falling over. Many people weren't even aware that they were taking off because they were talking until they realized they were flying through the sky. But a trip on the Hindenburg cost a lot of money. A one-way trip across the Atlantic cost an unbelievable $400, which is more than $7,800 today. People didn't just use the airship for fun, it was also used to spread messages. A notable event that it took part in was the opening ceremony for the 1936 Summer Olympics in Berlin, which it flew over. Sadly, the story of the Hindenburg took a terrible turn on May 6, 1937. The blimp was completely destroyed when it caught fire while trying to dock at its mooring mast in Lakehurst, New Jersey. This disaster wasn't just a loss of property. 35 people died, including 13 passengers, 22 staff members, and one person on the ground. Many ideas have been put forward about what started the fire and what made it spread so quickly but the exact cause of the inferno is still unknown. This disaster severely damaged public trust, making people afraid of traveling by rigid airship and ending the dream of luxury trips on these ships. Dear friends, thanks for coming with us on this trip through history. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and explain what you think in the comments below.